In this video I'm going to show you how to add a secondary attack to a dino. We're going to use the trike in this case. Then what we're going to do with that secondary attack is we are then going to make it fire a projectile. That projectile is going to require ammo and consume ammo from within the trike's inventory and then we're going to add a UI to our screen like a heads up display that will give us an ammo counter. So let's start. First thing we want to do is go ahead and open up our dino blueprint and go to the attack section. So, And what we want to do here is under attack infos we want to go ahead and add one. So go ahead and click the plus and that gives you a second attack info here, number one. What we're going to do here is just go ahead and copy the original attack, number one. So I'm just going to use the settings here. If you're using your own dyno you'd want to set it up to suit your dyno. So we're just going to go ahead and use these. Attack weight, range, interval. And we're going to go ahead and set our interval a little higher, so we're going to set it to 2. Turn the music down a little bit there. Sorry, I can't stand silent, so i got to have something in the background here. Alright, so let's go ahead and go check our next section here, which would be at the end of all these boxes, which would be the attack selection expiration time. Rotation range degrees, ground speed multiplier, and then we'll go ahead and set this one too. So 10, 55.25, and 140. 10, 55.25, 140. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll back up, see what else we need to set here. All right, we need to go ahead and add a melee socket, so we're going to go ahead and just copy that while we're here. And then right here, add a melee socket, paste that in. Then right here we can go ahead and set these how we want them. So we're going to go ahead and set this to 65 so it's a little stronger than the original. The impulse is the knockback, so we're going to set that pretty high too. We'll set it 250,000. And then the swing radius, we'll go ahead and use the default, which is 430. And then next we need a melee damage type. We're going to make this guy able to harvest wood with this attack. So once this loads, we're going to select one of the wood damage types. You would select stone or metal if you want to you'd make it harvest metal or stone. All right, so we got this open. Go ahead and type in wood, and we'll go ahead and use this one here. Damage type, melee, dino, herbivore, medium, more wood. And we're gonna go ahead, we don't need to worry about any of these except this one, we're gonna go ahead and set this to 10. This is a hard set number, so whenever we use this attack, it is going to subtract 10 from the stamina. It's not a percentage. All right, so next thing we need is an animation and then an animation weight. What we're going to do here, if you had your own animation, you'd go ahead and insert it right there. But what we're going to do on this one is go ahead and browse to the original one. And since this is a montage, we also need to get the sequence. So we're going to go ahead and copy both of these into our mod folder. and rename them. Alright, since we copied this, this montage is still going to be referencing the other sequence, so we need to point it to ours. So we'll go ahead and open it. Once it is open, highlight that. And then we're going to set it right here. Alright, now what we're going to do here, so we, since this is using the exact same animation, there's really no way we're going to be able to tell which one we're using. We're going to change the sound on here to a custom sound I already have set aside here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, open this up here, and set my sound. Lastly, I'm going to go back here to my character blueprint and set it to my montage. And then one last thing we need here is the attack state type class. Don't ask me exactly what these do. It has something to do with the way that the animation notifies work. All I know is that you do need to have one in there, otherwise it will crash your dev kit. So we're going to go ahead and just use the one that's here. 
browse to it, select it. All right, let's give it a try here. Our secondary Pew. attack. Normal attack, one wood. Pew. Our secondary attack, a hundred woods. All right, great, that's working. Now let's go ahead and add a projectile to this guy. First thing we're going to do here, since this he trike does not have a range socket is we're going to go ahead and add a box component. We're going to drag it onto the mesh. Once it's on the mesh we can then select the socket to attach it to. We're going to use the glasses socket. Now it's up there pretty high. We want it down lower. We'll go ahead and uncheck real time so it stops moving around and then position this where we want it. I want to have it come from about where his front horn is so that looks good about right there. Now I want to angle this up a little bit because this red arrow, that's the X trajectory, that's going to be the direction the projectile is going to initially go when it spawns. So we're going to angle that up just a bit here. Yep, so now it's going to go out pretty much straight, plus or minus. What If he's looking down, it's going to go down a little bit. If he's looking up, it's going to go up. So. That should be good right there. Now we need to head over to the... Actually, you know what? We need to go back here to defaults, and then we're going to use the do attack function. So we need to go ahead and enable this here. Now we're going to go to graph. And instead of using implementing the function like we did, if you ever saw my other video, we're just going to go ahead and use the do attack event. So just go ahead and go here. And it's basically the same. We're going to equal integer. We want a branch. Going to connect this up here. Our attack index is number one, so we're going to go ahead and put one right there. And then we're going to grab our box component here, make it a get, drag off of it, type in location, uncheck context sensitive, and you want the get world location that is the green function here. Then same thing for rotation. Next, we need a spawn actor from class. And then from the spawn transform here, drag out, make transform, and then go ahead and connect these guys up here, location and rotation. Connect your true here. Actually, you know what? We're going to put a delay, so add a delay. We're going to set it to half a second, and then connect it here. And I have this rocket that I made a while back. I'm going to go ahead and use that for this one. All right, go ahead and look for rocket underscore trike. And we should be set to go on here. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. No pun intended. That is working. Excellent. So let's go ahead and give this a requirement of having 
some, we'll make it stone in your inventory, in the trikes inventory. So we're going to go ahead and get the my inventory component. From here, we're going to do a BP get item of template. Go ahead and set this to stone. Imagine how much shorter this video would be if stuff loaded as soon as you clicked on it. All right, so we're going to go for stone, since that's already in our inventory when we spawn in the dev kit. Then from here, we want an is valid. And then is valid, we're going to go here, so it'll do our code. Not valid, what we're going to do here is we're going to get an owner controller, and then a shooter, cast to the shooter player controller then a client server notification. What this will do is if we don't have any, we can put a message up here. We're going to make it say no ammo. We're going to make it red. Set the size. And we'll leave it up there for five seconds. All right, so now when we go ahead and try and fire, if we don't have any stone, it's still going to play the animation because that's still a melee attack as well, but it's not going to fire the projectile unless we have stone in our inventory or in the dinos inventory so let's go ahead and give that a try Yeah, there's our message, and we have no projectile. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what happens. Let's see what happens when we throw some stone into the trike's inventory. Alright, there's our projectile. Alright, if you notice, we fired... You'll notice we fired a few shots there and we still have our original 15 stone. Let's see. Go ahead and take care of that real quick. What we're going to do for that is go ahead and drag from the return value of the BP get item of template. We're going to go way out here to the end and we are going to do an increment item quantity. Connect that up, set it to negative one, and voila. Now, whenever we fire, it's going to subtract a stone from our inventory. Alright, so that's that. We now require stone, and we remove stone when it fires. So let's go ahead and make this toggleable as well. We're going to do it two ways. First, we're going to... Go ahead and add it to the any so you can totally disable it if you want to. And then we're also going to make it so you can turn it on or off by a key. That way if you want to harvest a tree and you have stone in your inventory, it's not going to just fire unless you tell it to. So, first thing we need here is a begin play. Then we want a delay. Switch has authority. We need to get game mode. From the game mode, we are going to cast to the shooter game mode. Connect the authority pin here. And from here, we want a bool option any. We're going to go ahead and just call it our mod. And we'll call this no projectile. All right, so now what we need to do is go ahead and create a new variable. We're going to go ahead and leave it a boolean, and we're going to call this no projectile as well. Once you have that created, go ahead and drag it off. We need two setters. Then we're also going to, from here, go ahead and do a branch. And then we're going to position these bad boys right here, that there, that there. 
So it's going to check our any. If somebody has true or one set for no projectile, it's going to hit this branch right here. So we want to go ahead and set this here and leave that one unchecked. This is going to be our default. All right. Now that we've got that, what we want to do here is, I guess it doesn't really matter where we put it. We'll just put it right here. We're going to go ahead and do a branch. And from the false, we're going to hook right here. And then we're going to go ahead and drag our no projectile off here, do a getter, and set it there. Now what's going to happen is it's going to, if they have it checked, no projectile here, it's going to provide true here, so nothing's going to happen here. If they don't have it checked, it's going to go ahead and pass through, fire our projectile. Now let's go ahead and throw a key switch toggle on here. On dinosaurs, there are certain keys that you, actually a lot of keys that you cannot use even when you enable inputs on them, but there are keys already set up that do work without having to enable inputs. For example, on the trike, C is a key that works, and it doesn't do anything to the trike, so we're going to go ahead and use that. So want to go ahead and do C, and then we're going to need this to be a run on server event here, and the key press only does a client event, so we need to create a custom event, set it to run on server, and we're going to call this toggle projectile. And we'll go ahead and throw ROS on the end of it here for run on server, so we know it's a run on server event just by a quick glance. Thanks to Jay Slay for that tip. All right, now we want to call our function that we just created here. So projectile. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to create one more variable here. And we're going to call it projectile toggle. And then we need two setters. And one getter. And then we're going to do a branch. And then you want to set the one here on the false branch to, you want to set it there. So by default, it's going to be false. So the first time you press it, it's going to come through here. It's going to see that it's false. Then it's going to set it to true. So next time you press it, it's going to then disable it. All right, so now that we got that, we're going to need another branch over here. And then we need a getter for the projectile toggle. Hook our false from here, here, and then true, here. That way our projectile has to be enabled before it'll actually fire. And if you wanted to, you could add another one of these over here for saying that it's not enabled or something, whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. I was wondering why our no ammo wasn't firing, but that's because there's nothing connected to it. So now we should have projectiles. Oh, we need to enable it. There we go. Ignore that. It's noon on Stark Wars. All right, so since we had a little issue there, 
determining whether the projectile was enabled or not, we're going to do something here. If you notice, we already have some sparks on the horns of that there triceratops. So what we're going to do here is on our toggle projectile, I don't know if we're going to have to create a multicast event for this or not, but we'll just try it. What we're going to do is grab our particle systems here. We're going to do a toggle active, hook them all up. And we need a second one. Oh, you know what? We're going to do set active. That's the one I want. All right. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate that too. And connect these all up here too. Now we're going to set these here, connect them up like so. And check that to be the active. So when we turn on our projectile, that's going to set, set our particle systems here active. As you can see, they're active right now. So what we need to do is go down in here and set them all to inactive. Alright, so we got no sparks. Alright, yeah, it's not working right on server, so what we're going to have to do here is... I'm just going to do this because this is the quickest and easiest way to do this right now. Oops, let's go ahead and add a multicast on the end of that. And we're going to set that right there, and then we need one more. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a shot now. There we go. Now his sparks are toggling. And we have a projectile. Alright, so now let's go ahead and let's make a widget. Head back to our folder, right click anywhere, user interface, widget blueprint. We're going to go ahead and call this Trike Widget BP. Go ahead and open it up. First thing you want to do whenever you make a widget, create a new widget, is go ahead and reparent it. So File, Reparent Blueprint. Give birth to a child while it loads. I don't know. <laughs> it takes forever, so to find something to do while it's loading.
All right, what you want to set it to is Primal UI. There's others. Uh, I've never used anything and needed to use anything other than the Primal UI. So go ahead and set it to Primal UI. And what we're going to do here is go ahead and drag a horizontal box down here onto our canvas panel. We're going to go ahead and move it. We're going to set it up here. And then we're going to set it to an anchor. We're going to put the anchor right here so it's what this does, basically, from what I understand or from what I can see, is it keeps it relative to the position of the screen, no matter how sight, how big your monitor is. If you have a bigger monitor, it's going to sit down lower. If you have a smaller monitor, I think it's going to sit up higher or the other way around. Something I'll show you a little example of how it works. If you have, we'll put one anchored here and one not anchored. So, so now that we have our horizontal box, let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. Not that big. But let's go ahead. And Go about like that, and what we're going to do here is add a vertical box. And then on our vertical box, we're going to add a text block. We're going to call our text block ammo. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add another vertical box onto our horizontal box, and another text block onto that new vertical box. And we're just going to go ahead and call that zero. That's going to be our actual ammo count. We're going to go ahead and set this color. We're going to set it to blue. And if you want right here in the style font, font draw scaler, that's where you can set the size. So we'll go ahead and make this box a little bigger so it holds everything. And we'll make both of these a little bigger. All right. Now, you know, let's go ahead and we're going to add another box here, another horizontal box. Go ahead and drag it under our canvas panel. And then we want to go ahead and we're going to move this up here. But we're not going to anchor this one this time. That way we can see the difference. Because what's going to happen is even though it's up here by this one, it's not going to be right next to it in the game, you'll see. All right, so now we got our ver horizontal, so now we need a vertical on it. And it's this one that put it up here, so we want to drag it there, and then we want a text block here as well. And we're going to go ahead and call this stamina. Go ahead and set its size to 0.9 as well. And then we need another vertical box here with a text block. And we'll go ahead and set that to zero. And we'll set its color to green. All right, oh, and we'll just go ahead and set its size too. All right, so we have our ammo and our stamina boxes. We're gonna go ahead and move this up just a bit here. Doesn't, ma doesn't really matter if they overlap here. All right. So now what we need to do is make it so that this number right here will reflect our ammo count. Same thing for the stamina. So what we're going to do here is highlight your text box, your text block. Then over here on content, click on bind and then create binding. All right, so what we need to do here is link this up to our dyno. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable over here. We're going to go ahead and call this the dyno. And we're going to set its variable type to dino character. Or primal dino character, sorry. Alright, once we have our dino, go ahead and drag him out here. Do a get. Drag off here. And we are doing, what are we doing? What is this one? This one is ammo. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and we want to get the inventory component. From there, we want to go ahead and do a BP get item of template is valid. Then from here, we want to go ahead and get quantity. And then we're going to do something here so that because what's going to happen here is that 
it's going to display our the whatever quantity we have. And let's say we get down to the last item. When it uses up that last item, it's still going to say 1 on our screen. So we want that to reflect properly. We want it to say it's 0 when there are 0 items in our inventory. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new variable. We're going to call this the quantity or the QTY. And we're going to set its type to text. Now we're going to drag out two setters and one getter. Take the getter, connect it up right here. And then you want to take the two setters, do one off the not valid, one off the is valid. And what we're going to do here, I'll move this out of the way because it's going to create a new box. So you want to take the item quantity here and connect it up to the is valid one. And then this one, we're just going to go ahead and throw a zero in there. Then hook both of them up here. So if we have some, it's going to get the quantity. It's going to display the quantity. If we have none, it's going to show zero instead of whatever the last number was there. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to stone. All right, there's that one. And then now we're gonna go back over here to our designer and on the stamina, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create a binding. We're going to grab our dyno, a get. This time we're gonna go for the status component. And from here, we wanna do BP get current status value, that one right there. Go ahead and set it to stamina, drag it over there, and we got our text. Now this text is going to be a float, which means it's going to show in percentages, unless we make this 3 right here into a 0. So now, if, like let's say our, sta our stamina is 125, it's just going to say 125. Put a 1 here, it's going to say 125.1 if there is, if it's over 125 put three there, it's going to be 125.125. You get it, what I'm saying there. All right, so we'll go ahead and set it to zero, so it's just an even number. And we'll go ahead and test it out. It should be working here. However, before we test it, we need to call this widget into our screen. So I'm getting a step ahead of myself. So let's go ahead and go back to our character blueprint. Onto the graph. And then what we're going to do here is go ahead and right click. And then we want to go ahead and get set writer. It's event BP notify set writer. And there's also a clear writer. This fires when you mount the dyno. This fires when you unmount it. So from here, we're going to go ahead. Oh, and one thing I should mention about these two events is they both fire client and server. We're only adding a widget using these events, so we want to go ahead and add a switch has authority here. And any code that we're going to run after this, we want to run it off the remote because we're only running it on our client. So from here, we're going to drag out and we're going to do an owner controller. Then we are going to create widget. Go ahead and connect that to the remote. And then we're going to go ahead and set this to our widget that we just made. Right click on the return value, promote it to variable. We're going to go ahead and call this new variable trike widget. And then from the return value of the create widget, we want to go ahead and add to viewport. And then from the return value again, you want to drag off and do the dyno, set the dyno. Now we're going to connect that here. And from here, we're going to get a reference to self. So what's going to happen is when we mount the dinosaur, it's going to go ahead and set the dyno.
this variable right here in our widget is going to set this to our trike so that way we can get its status component and its inventory component. All right, so last thing we need to do here for this is go ahead and drag our trike widget out, do a get, and then from here we want to do remove. And just connect it up here to the remote again. And now we should have a widget that shows us our stamina and our ammo count. So let's go ahead and try it out. And there it goes finally. All right, let's go ahead and spawn in all these guys in. We should have a widget when we jump on him. Yep, there it is. And as you can see, the stamina, even though on the widget itself, it was right next to ammo, or right under it, it's quite a ways away. And you can see it going down. So let's go ahead and add some ammo. And we have 15 ammo. Turn on the rockets. And there is our ammo counter, along with our stamina meter. All right, so one last thing here before we wrap this up is on that widget, I'm just gonna show you real quick. All I gotta do to get that stamina meter up there by where that ammo, ammo one was, let's just go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and check it out. Yep, see, much better. And there you have it. A trike with a secondary attack which will harvest wood. You can also fire a projectile. We can turn that on or off through the any if we like. It also has a toggle on the keyboard for the projectile and a widget. Hope you enjoyed the video. Find it useful. Thanks for watching.